Hello everyone, George Trail, and welcome back to my channel. Now, this is the second part, maybe first, depends on the order I put these videos out, of just me answering some of your questions that you sent in ages ago, but I've only now just been bothered to read for an answer. Um, so, so this video is all about some medicine questions, so medicine Q&A, um, just in general, maybe Oxford, no, just medicine general, you know, not Oxford specific. Um, so I've got your questions on my phone here, just going to answer some of them and yeah, hopefully this helps. I don't know, we'll just end up loving like I did in the other one, but hopefully you enjoy. So the first question is, wow, straight in there. Do you feel sick when you see the cadavers, organs, etc.? So um, when it comes to learning about the human body, it would make sense to study the human body. And sometimes the only way to do certain parts of studying the human body is to see a real life human body. Um, so I initially was like, I, I didn't I didn't really know how to feel when I first came across the cadaver. Um, I was like, this is this is this is this is interesting. This is this is something. I didn't really know what words to put to it. But I think over time you get not used to it, but you just become slightly desensitized to um the things that you see. So I remember when I did my unique summer school like years ago, I was grateful enough to have had the opportunity to like hold a real life brain. So there I was like wow this is this is this is a brain this is a brain um and that feeling initially was very like intense however you do become a bit more used to certain things so now when i see things i'm just like yeah not too bad but there's always that sort of initial mm, feeling like what like what is this but over time you just eventually get used maybe not used to it but you just become less you know immediate reaction if that makes sense i hope it does sometimes i speak and i just hear myself and i'm like what are you talking about Holly? but hopefully that makes sense how do you manage to maintain your confidence some people sometimes people don't trust themselves see my motto is to fake it till you make it this confidence or confidence you see is a facade it's not even a facade i've just grown up um knowing how to pretend to know what i'm doing when half the time i don't so all the first and even sometimes now i'm still being like haha I totally get this when actually I'm like no what on earth is going on but it's just something that I've developed for myself um I very much suffered still do sometimes from imposter syndrome sometimes I just don't feel like I belong here um but that's sort of a natural feeling that many many people feel it's just sort of one of those things so I just tell myself continuously actually you're doing good Tolu totally. don't worry about it too much and I feel like that in itself helps to make me feel a little bit more confident in my abilities so just to you know appreciate what I'm capable of rather than just diminishing my you know abilities but other than that fake it till you make it that's how I got here <laughs> um so this person says do you always need to like human contact while studying medicine um I don't know what that means as in do you have to enjoy being around people to study medicine I mean usually people when they study medicine their aim is to become a doctor or at least do some research and that requires human inter interaction and so I, I, I assume yes unless I've just misinterpreted that question completely um I don't know moving on um for work experience how do you find the contacts or what would you write in an email I emailed anyone and everyone I went up on google looked at different universities and their tutors and stuff or just random people i just emailed none of them responded to me but it's all good i asked my parents if they knew anyone i asked my parents to ask their colleagues if they knew anyone i asked my friends to ask their parents to ask their colleagues if they knew anyone and eventually someone responded um it's just a case of just literally emailing anyone and everyone um and just hoping someone will reply or just contacting your local gp or something or local hospital and seeing if they have like a work experience placement sort of thing and just applying i guess that's really it um next question is how do you take notes and revise so for me the way i make notes depends on what i'm revising for so if it's just for something in my syllabus i like writing on paper and pen um, but that is not good for the environment. So instead I recently got myself an iPad, so I use Notability, I just handwrite my stuff according to my syllabus, get some pictures and some diagrams to help me understand said content. However, if I'm doing something in terms of active recall, I'll use what is called Anki, which is sort of a flashcard online system that I use that really helped me with my first year exams in terms of revising for it. But other than that, I just tend to handwrite my notes and that's what 
works best for me. Um, the next question is, is this what you expected? I'm assuming you mean time oxygen in my degree and why? Please, P.S. love your whole energy. Oh, thank you. Um, not gonna lie, I knew I'd have a lot of work to do at Oxford. Um, now that I'm doing said lot of work, bro, is it intense? But I'm enjoying it. Um, I knew this was gonna be expected. It's a lot of science and I kind of knew that in advance. So to me, it's not really that big of a deal, but I just hope it continues off. I, and I'm enjoying myself. So it is what I expected kind of, um, but the pace, I think for me, I did it really deep before coming here. I don't know it would be as fast paced as it is, but I'm adjusting to it and it's fine, so it's all good. Um, does it ever feel boring, i.e. not so much content you dread, but med school in general? Not gonna lie, there are certain topics that I just don't, not care, but I just, I'm just not interested in them that much. So sometimes for lectures, oh my gosh, if, because we're doing it all online now, sometimes if it's just drawing on and on and on, I will end up falling asleep and I'll wake up being like, oh no, I've missed the last half hour, half hour, I have to rewatch it again. So there are some topics that are that way, but for me, most of them I do really enjoy because I think just learning about the human body in general is quite interesting, so it's all good. Um, but the next question I've got, is it easy? No, it is not. But I'm having fun, so it's all good. <laughs> One of my friends asked why are the medics all annoying? Not gonna lie, it's the mentality we've had just applying Medics are really annoying. If I was looking at myself from like a third person perspective, I wouldn't even want to be my friend. Medics are annoying and it's, yeah, we're just all annoying. Um, so do you have to have a good UCAT score? Now this depends on what university you apply to. So UCAT is one of the admissions tests and it's required by some of the medicine universities or medical schools, whereas some require the BMAT. So just check up to see what um, university you need to sort of use and then go from there. Let's kind of switch it off. Let's switch it back on on yay okay next question is how much free time do you have as a student love you oh my god thank you love you too um in terms of free time again you can allocate as much free time for yourself as you want as long as you manage your time well um just make sure you get all your work done or just balance it in a way where you can get it eventually done but we do relatively have quite a bit of free time so i tend to do my work in the mornings but my evenings are free so that's just how i work for things and people do it the other way around so they can like fit in sports stuff as well but other than that it's just a, a case of managing your time well so that you can do what you need to do at the right time. Um, what's the jump from A level to undergrad really like? I feel like first year it's a lot. So because we're learning so much at the same time, it does feel quite overwhelming at times, but it's manageable. Like if people in the years above have gone through it, so can you. So I don't know, that's not really a nice response, but I feel like the jump, you just, it takes a while to adjust basically. It took me quite a while to adjust in first year because I just didn't know what method would work for me because a lot of the techniques I used at A-level weren't working for first year. So it took a while for me to sort of readjust to things in a better way, but you will eventually get there because um, I managed to eventually get there. I'm still learning as I go, but honestly, it's fine. Um, how much time do you get off realistically? Again, it depends on how you allocate your day. So I tend to have my evenings quite free. So it's not too much of an issue for me. Um, how's it like balancing studying medicine and your social life? Again, time management is key. Um, I do my work in the morning, so if I have my evenings free, sometimes I will work with my friends in their room or in like a new setup and space, I'm not by myself, so it's fine. People do lots of societies and stuff, so there's, lo there's lots of times to do things that you need to do. You, obviously you have your weekends if you just don't want to do work on your weekend but there's enough time to sort of do social things and not neglect your degree. Um, next question is, is it harder to be work to be a working woman while pursuing medicine? Not gonna lie, a lot of fields definitely are still very much male dominated. However, my year, the majority of us are female. Um, I don't know what it's like for the current freshers, but just being a woman in many careers in any way is kind of difficult because you have to sort of break through the glass ceiling and sort of assert your position in place. I've always been the kind of person to sort of like make it known that I like belong in this area that me being a woman shouldn't affect what I'm doing. But I think one thing that makes it a bit harder is that not only am I women, but I am a black woman. So at times it does make things a little bit harder, but you just, I just try and just try, I just try and persevere and just work through things without letting those things inhibit me, which is easier said than done. But things as a woman is hard, things as a black woman is hard, but I just have to keep going a bit and see where the road takes me. Um, what's an Oxford medics timetable like? So in first year, when we actually physically could go to lectures, we'd have about two or three lectures in a day, usually starting at 9 a.m. Sometimes we'd have a practical after, which would run into the afternoon, and then depending on whether or not your tutor was available, have sort of mini sort of classroom discussions, i.e. a tutorial for about an hour, and then going through there. And then once that's all done, you can probably, we probably will have an essay to start working on to maybe plan that essay, 
writing it up and then doing a sport of some sort I don't know but it's just usually maybe two or three lectures in a day two or three practicals in a week as well and then some tutorials on the side um and yeah that's a typical timetable maybe I'll no I won't put a screenshot I'm too lazy for that but other than that it's all good next one is how to increase confidence or communication skills for your interview honestly just practice talking to people get your friends or a member of your family and just talk to them about a science topic or a topic of interest and express your opinions on it maybe just consolidate your sort of a-level or IB knowledge so that you know if whatever you're going through is you know accurate and other than that just practice talking that's essential what the interview is it's a conversation just practice talking and conversing with someone about your passion for a subject there are some example questions that you can find online get someone to ask you those questions and just practice you know responding um and then going from there um do, 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 do next one do you find you talk medicine do you find you talk about medicine outside of studying and lectures yes um my friends make fun of me for how much I talk about, well not talk much about medicine but essentially my friends try and get me to diagnose them because I'm a medical student which I don't do because I can't diagnose as a medic um, but it's just that my degree revolves, well my life kind of revolves around my degree a little bit. I try not to let it do that because I can't spend every waking second talking about medicine because that's just not ideal but other than that it's yeah. I do talk about medicine quite often purely because one I've got a YouTube channel about my journey into medicine and two I just always work so I'm just always finding myself in a position talking about my degree to some extent not as often as some people but still a little a, more than the average person but yeah um next one is what's your favorite topic and subject not gonna lie I per right now want to go into neurology or just be a neuroscientist so the brain is my particular interest and we're current currently doing that this year so neuro is really interesting right now and i just can't wait to see um where it goes okay so the next question is do you rely on your textbooks often or just lecture slides now with oxford lecture slides simply not enough because a lot of our essays revolve around using experimental evidence so we need to read textbooks very often i personally like looking at online publications just because having to get to said textbook is a bit long especially now with sort of new systems in place to meet covid guidelines guidelines so i just like looking for online resources but textbooks are really really handy and i tend to use them more than the lectures because i feel like sometimes lectures don't, don't give you enough information so i will do further research on top of that by reading through textbooks or looking at online um, resources um, and going through there um let me think how do you find a degree I like it, I really enjoy it, um, looking forward to it, not looking forward to it, I'm doing it right now but I really do love my degree, even though I complain a lot, I actually do really love it so it's honestly all good. Um, and I think that's it in terms of the questions, so hopefully I've answered what you're looking out for. Um, if you like this video let me know if you want me to do some more in the future, maybe I will, maybe I won't, it depends on my mood, but I'm going to leave it here, but thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one, bye! Thank you.